ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jordan and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be working on the Skywars um, plugin, uh, not just this episode, for the next few, um, and we're going to do this per a viewer request. I can't remember who it was because it was on a live stream that it was requested, but it'll be here nonetheless. So thank you to whoever requested it. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. So first of all, just wanna go over the GitHub real quick. I've already set up a GitHub this time around. Um, it's at Jordan Osterick slash Skyward series. It'll be linked down below in the description if you wanna check it out. Um, it's going to have a branch per episode. So we have a episode zero right here, master, which is going to be the latest uh, up-to-date one. Episode zero is just gonna have the code that I'm starting with today. Um, so it just has our default config, our instance, and all of that. Uh, we're not going to need to see this uh, at all though in the video, but you guys can always check this out It's going to be in the description below every single Skywars series episode of bucket coding So let's go ahead and close out of that and get started. So I already handled um, our data our game info.yml file um, in here so we can have uh, whoops uh, Have our game info and, uh, saved and all that um, We also have our configuration stuff set as well um, so we can go ahead and close out of that and let's go ahead and get started here so the way I want to handle this and we'll make a little comment down here um, is I want to be able to have um, switch over to the quiet keyboard um, I want to have bungee support and one server support so what that means is you can either choose to have it run one game on this on the server or you can run um, multiple so uh, let's go ahead and have that we I'm not gonna care about an API right now we can get into that later um, this is going to well I think that's really about it for now that's all I really want to have um, in mind right now uh, there are some other things but they're not necessary just yet uh, so let's go ahead and actually get into um, um, the programming side so we want to create um, Constructor, so uh, a constructors package with a game object inside of it. Um, and how this is going to work is we're going to have this game in here. And so the way I'm envisioning this is if you have it set up to run bungee cord, it's only ever going to allow one instance of a game to be running at one time. Otherwise, you can have as many as the server can handle, which in essence means however many the server owner wants to set up or whatever, it's up to them. Um, we're not going to hard limit um, to save on performance. That's, you know, if they break it, their server, that's on them. Uh, so let's go ahead and quickly go back into our main and create a new package called, um, or a new class called game handler. Actually, let's go. Okay. We can probably just have that in skywars.java, uh, our skywars file, or our skywars class here. We don't really need to have that um, anywhere else um, in, another in another file, because that just creates redundancy that we don't really need at this time. Um, so let's go ahead and inside of here, create a private, uh, private set of game, and this is going to be known as games, and this is going to be equal to a new hash set. Um, so we're going to go down in here. We're going to say if git config. So now that we actually know that this exists, we got git boolean um, single server mode. Uh, otherwise, and then okay. So let's go ahead and go into our config and actually add this as our default. So as we make uh, config changes or as we access variables. Um, from within our code, we're going to go ahead and add the defaults over here in this file. So single server mode by default is going to be false. Um, and we can just go ahead and add a comment in here and say, um, turning this to true will only will force the server to only run one game. This is optimal for Bungie mode. Um, and actually, uh, we're gonna go ahead and create another variable in here called actually we'll, we'll do that later um, when we actually need it so so if we were uh, if we're running on single server so if we're using single server then we're going to go ahead and say private int 
games limit is going to be equal to zero by default here, just so that if something happens, it's not going to allow any games. Um, otherwise, games limit is going to be equal to negative one. Um, and negative one is just our way of saying we don't care. Um, and of course, you all can change the code for this in whatever way you want. If you want to limit the game to a certain amount, um, you can do that. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and say public void register game. Um, and we're going to say game game. And we're going to say if games.size equals the game's limit and the game's limit does not equal negative one. So in essence, what this does is it say it is it checks uh, if we're at our limit. Um, uh, then, uh, whoops, if we're at our limit, don't add a game. So we're just going to throw an exception. Actually, we don't want to throw an exception. Um, we want a boolean return a false. Otherwise, we're going to return true and add our game to the, the, the list here. So we're going to say games.add game. Um, yeah, returning a boolean would be a good option there. So I like that space. Okay, so we need to go through here. And now we need to access our, uh, our game data, our game info.yml file in there, uh, which is basically going to have an information per game object. Um, so we know uh, how many players it, the, the game itself supports, um, how many, you know, where, not where, um, like just, just different information about the game that we might need. Um, we're going to need to use that to set up our game object. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and say uh, for uh, string uh, game I or game name I guess <laughs> colon uh, data handler dot get instance dot get game info dot get configuration section games dot get keys false okay so let's unwrap this statement here for those of you that don't know what it does we're going to loop through every single game in this uh, in this games section so we're going to get the actual section from our game info file from our data handler and we're going to not get any we, we just want the keys we we don't want it to go uh, deep so we're just going to get the the top level stuff and not anything deeper um, and that's what this does right here um, so we're going to go ahead and say game game equals new game um, and we'll have to actually set this up set up a constructor in here called public game um, string game name and then we can go ahead and set that up uh, since we have it we're just going to go through there and we're going to go ahead and say this dot register game game and that is automatically registered um, we can leave this as public even though it gives us an error, not an error, but a, um, a recommendation. And the reason why is because we are going to end up registering games. Um, if they're created at runtime, we need to make sure we can actually use that from another class um, and not just when they're uh, when the server boots. Um, so now that we have that, we can do some more fun things here. Um, so that now, okay, we can basically at this point now assume that all of our games are loaded, um, but we need to check right here. We need to get that configuration section. Um, and first of all, I just completely forgot. We need to say if this configuration section does not equal null, because that's not going to exist at default, then we can <laughs> loop through it. Otherwise it's gonna give us an error and we don't want that. So uh, if we're right here, we can assume that uh, no games, whoops, no games are um, are created. So uh, if we're if we're at this point right here where the code is, we know that no games are have been created. So uh, basically, there are no games. There's no point in looping. So now we need to notify them through console. Hey, there's no games. You you can't play it. You, it's not going to work until you make a game. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to say get logger dot severe and say actually probably just warning um, warning would be better um, no games have been created um, 
please create one using the creation command. Okay, uh, we'll probably change this to say what the command actually is when we make it. Um, so that's good. We know when there are no games. Um, perfect. So, so at this point we have our game constructor here. We have all of this and it just it really does nothing right now. Uh, it just sets up our, our thing. So we're going to need some variables that we want to pull from our uh, stuff here. So we want to go ahead and say private int max players. And uh, this is just going to be set as nothing right now. Private int min players is another thing we want. Private. Um, what a, hmm. Probably set location, actually. Private world, world for the world um, that we want to use. We want to say private. Um, what should we have? We should probably have a set of locations. Uh, I don't know. We might change that to a list. I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, set location spawn points. Uh, and that's really all we need for now. Um, we should be good with just that basic information. Actually, say basic config options. Uh, and then down here, we can say active game information. Um, so private set player players. We can say private set player spectators. Whoops, spectators. Uh, private set. Uh, we'll say game team. I'll get into. The, we'll make that in just a second. Teams. Um, right here, we want to say inside of constructors, we want a game team class. Uh, actually, we want to say private boolean is team game. Um, okay, game team. We'll get into that soon. Um, hmm. you know what? Let's go ahead and create a game player class actually to use instead of um, two separate objects. And in here, instead of having a teams and or player list here, why not just have a game player? And that game player will then have inside of it, we're going to have a private player, player, or a private game team team. Uh, and then we'll just evaluate which one is null <laughs> um, when we create this and then so we can just run our actions on here and it'll handle it the, pretty much the same way for each um, method we want to use. So this just makes our code a little bit more compact we don't have to copy paste it. Whoa, copy paste it or do anything fancy. Um, so in player, 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 so this dot player equals player or public game player, game team, team. This dot team equals team. Um, we can make our methods in there. Um, uh, we need a chat utility here. Uh, chat util. Uh, and what this guy will handle. Um, okay. After this, I'm going to go through what I've written because I feel like I'm going a little too fast here. Uh, so we're going to say public static string format string string. We're going to return a chat color, a translated chat color. Okay, let's go over exactly what I've just created here. So, uh, inside of our game here, we have our maximum amount of players we want, our minimum amount of players, the world that the game happens in, where the spawn points are, and if it's a team game. Then we have our active game information, which is a list of players and a list of spectators, and these are game player objects. Uh, these are all going to get set inside this constructor once we get around to that. Uh, inside of the game player class here, we have a player object and a team object, and we have two different ways to construct our game player um, by using a player or a team. And whenever we create a method in here, it's going to check which one of these is null um, and use the other one, uh, if that makes sense. So we're going to use the one that isn't null, and so we don't have to create multiple ways of doing the same thing over and over and over and it just makes life a lot more simpler um a lot simpler in the long run 
uh, inside of chat util here. This is a static method that just takes a string and adds color to it if we use the and symbol. Um, so now that that monstrosity is explained um, a little bit better, let's get into setting these values here. So we're going to say this dot, whew, this dot max players is going to be equal to, actually we just want file configuration, file configuration is going to be equal to data handler dot get instance dot get game info. Uh, we're going to say get int. We want to say games dot plus game name plus max players. We can copy this down and use it for min players here. Uh, the world can be this dot world. So we need to bucket dot create world, new world creator, uh, and then this file configuration we got get string. Oops, games dot game name plus dot world name. Uh, to do spawn points. And is team game is probably going to should be moved to active game information. Um, that would be a little bit better. Um, okay, when, let's go inside of our game player class here. And we're going to say public boolean is team is team class. And we're going to say return team does uh, equals equals null, or does not equal null, and the player equals equals null. Okay. Uh, so, what this does is this, uh, lets us check if this class is dedicated for a team uh, or a player, um, which is why we want this in here because then we can validate different things and make sure that <laughs> we don't have a mix of teams and players uh, for our game player. Um, okay. So now that that's all good to go, we've set our maximum players and we set our minimum players based upon the configuration file here. Um, our world uh, is set properly. Um, cool. So um, let's go ahead. I think I think that's good to stop at right now. Um, yeah, I think we're pretty good in the way we've structured this. Um, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and end off this episode, um, and then in the next one, we're going to handle the architecture of our game inside of our file, um, so then we can handle spawn points intelligently um, and all this other mumbo-jumbo that will help us in the future. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed. If there's anything specific you want me to cover in this uh, in this Skyward miniseries that relates to the, uh, the game or the plugin somehow, please let me know. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember, the GitHub is down below, so if you want to check out everything that was written, uh, in episode one or modify it or download the code from the very beginning of this video, you can. Um, so again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a like. Take care.